Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it's five minutes past two, so I suggest that we start now. Um, so welcome everyone to this uh, SEGE release webinar. Um, I am Olivier Godino, I am the coordinator of SEGE project and um, we will do this uh, presentation uh, with uh, Mathieu Karoff, a colleague of mine, and but, but also many other partners from the project are uh, here online connected and uh, we will uh, offer you some time for discussion in the end of the webinar where we will be able to, to exchange with you. Um, so, uh, let's start now. So the webinar schedule is that um, I will present, uh, I will briefly present SEGE project so that you know how it was financed and organized and who are the partners and so on. Uh, then uh, we will do a live demonstration of the game. Uh, so you probably know that uh, we developed uh, an online serious game, so uh, we will present you this in 20 minutes about. Uh, then we will show you some uh, specific features for, uh, for teachers about uh, the creation of custom scenarios uh, available to all teachers and also uh, some pedagogical material that uh, we developed during the project and that we uh, put uh, to, the to the disposition of, uh, of everyone to, to use. And then we will have uh, about 20 minutes of time for uh, discussion and questions about the game, its use, and uh, some uh, maybe following projects. So let's start with uh, the project presentation. Uh, first, uh, how did it um, how did it start? Um, you probably know that agroecology is considered as a relevant option to improve economic, social, and environmental performances of European agriculture, uh, which has some uh, some drawbacks. Actually, it's it's very productive, but uh, not always very environmentally friendly, and also not always very economically. Uh, uh, viable for farmers. Um, so uh, agroecology offers some potential solutions and uh, as, uh, as agronomy teachers in higher education in France we wanted to, uh, to, to teach agroecology to our students but uh, we realized that uh, specific skills are required for agroecology learning and especially multidisciplinary knowledge is very essential and also systems approach of farming systems. It's not exclusive, well it's not only agroecology that benefits from these skills but it's really very important for agroecology learning. And these skills are not so easy to teach in uh, the way we are organized at least in France because we are usually uh, disciplinary teachers and uh, not always uh, with many uh, multidisciplinary activities and not always with a very broad approach of farming systems. So um, we wanted to create a tool that would help uh, teaching these specific skills and uh, we also know that learning this kind of skills benefit from an active pedagogy so we we already implement uh, farm visits and, and things like that in, in our teaching uh, but we wanted also a tool uh, more centered about on, uh, on problem resolution and experimentation and these all these uh, aspects made us, made us think about a serious game and we, we know that a serious game can be beneficial for uh, interactivity and engagement of students, motivation of students through learning by doing. They can experiment different uh, strategies, test, uh, test different strategies and see which one is, uh, is, is best for them. And also we wanted a computer game because uh, this allows the calculation of many indicators in a, in a blink very very quickly so it can be very interesting for students to see immediately the impact of uh, what uh, 
what they do on the farm. And also it can be used in distance teaching, uh, which was not anticipated of course uh, at the start of the project, but uh, uh, probably uh, the number of people uh, here today is, uh, is a good proof that uh, the webinars and the distance teaching uh, allow to, to gather uh, many people. So we decided to create a project, uh, a pedagogical project, to build this uh, serious game. So um, we, we had the idea of uh, asking for a European project Erasmus Plus, uh, which we got after the second uh, trial. And the project is also co-financed by the French Chair of Agroecology, which, uh, which is gathering three French uh, higher education uh, institutions uh, in agriculture and three uh, large uh, agricultural cooperatives of, of Western Front. Um, the project lasted for 37 months and uh, united 24 university teachers from six universities, uh, so University of Bologna in Italy, University of Agriculture in Krakow in uh, Poland, uh, Jean Blou, uh, University of Liège Jean Blou Agrobiotech in Belgium, uh, Oniris uh, Vet School in North in France, uh, ESA Angers in France as well, and Agrocampus West uh, in Rennes, France. So three French schools united by the French Chair of Agroecology and three uh, European partners. Uh, we developed an online game that I will show you in a few minutes, as well as accompanying uh, pedagogical documents and video tutorials. Um, but we also had some, uh, some activities to, to test the game, and the, the most important activity organized during the project was a one-week test session with 52 students from all partner universities, uh, and this is what you see in the little picture. Uh, so we met in uh, Bologna, in Italy, uh, with 52 students, and this was the opportunity to, to test the game, to crash test the game, in fact, because it was really the, the first uh, prototype of the game, uh, and this helped us correct the game and improve the game a lot, and this also helped us uh, test the interest of the game in terms of uh, pedagogy, and I will show you a few results uh, about that. We also organized a student contest, gathering uh, 240 students online uh, to try to win uh, a, a train pass uh, through, through Europe for two people. And um, we were quite happy to see that uh, many students uh, were successful in playing the game and many of them were really interested uh, about the game, so we received some, uh, some emails afterwards uh, saying that the game was really uh, really nice, so it's, it's uh, satisfying and it, it, it's also uh, uh, nice to have feedback and uh, try to improve our, our project. And we also organized lastly three online teacher trainings, gathering about 150 teachers uh, to discover the, the, the game. And finally, we are here today with this official release event, and thank you for being there and I hope that you will uh, enjoy what you see. Um, so the game objectives of, the, of our serious game is, uh, well, first it's, it's uh, defined, it's developed for uh, students in higher education, so, so bachelor and master students in priority, but it's, it's also adapted to agricultural high school students, and uh, it, we also plan to use it with young counselors uh, farm counselors uh, to give them a broader view of farming systems functioning uh, if they lack uh, that kind of approach. Uh, this is why uh, the French Chair of Agroecology is also co-financing the project. It's because they plan to use uh, this tool uh, during uh, uh, vocational uh, training. So the pedagogical objectives of the game, we, de we define three main objectives. 
The first objective is to provide knowledge of agroecological practices and their individual effects to students. The second objective is to, uh, to help students evaluate the combined impacts of several practices on the farming system, so more a systems approach. What happens if I change uh, my grass management and my feed management and uh, my uh, fert crop fertilization and so on. And third, um, the idea is also to, to be able to study various uh, options to reach a given objective, so try to find the best or the optimal path to, to reach a, a goal. And this, is, uh, this has more uh, to do with transition management and how to manage uh, a transition on several years. How did we build uh, this game? So the game is composed of two main parts. The first part is a scientific model, uh, which you see here in a simple uh, representation. Um, the model is representing a mixed crop and dairy farm, so only uh, field crops, grasslands and uh, dairy cows, uh, nothing else. And uh, we decided to represent one farm per, per participating country, so four farms in the European context because it was a European project. Um, we identified uh, the main agroecological practices through a literature review uh, for this kind of farming system. And then we selected a set of various indicators on te related to technical, economic, social, environmental aspects. And then we had to try to link the practices with the indicators. So we tried to assess the impact of practices on the indicators. Uh, mostly through a literature review, but also through uh, the use of different models and also uh, based on expertise. And this uh, big matrix uh, will be, will be uh, presented in a scientific paper that is currently under review in agricultural systems. Uh, the idea is that it's not a, a mechanistic model, it's really a, a you change one thing, it, it changes one, you change one practice, it, change, it has an impact on one or several indicators. It's really a basic uh, modeling conception uh, because the idea is mostly pedagogical and not, uh, uh, not predictive. Second important part of the game is the game interface. So we wanted a simple and intuitive interface adapted to everyone. So you see it online. It's very, very simple. Um, it represents your farm and you, you have these uh, different uh, icons, very easy to spot and identify. I will show you that uh, in, in a few minutes. <coughs> We also have aggregated indicators of sustainability, economic, uh, environmental and social indicators aggregated in, in one uh, uh, sub-dimension of sustainability and then aggregated again to give a sustainability score of the farm. Uh, we also have a score uh, which is linked to the weakest pillar of sustainability, so it's not exactly the same information that, than the sustainability score. Uh, and the score is mostly used for a competition or a challenge between, between students, so it's more a game objective. And we also try to, to give uh, some, well, to improve some aspects of gamification, so we, you can win badges depending on uh, your practices and you, uh, we will have a high score table appearing on the website. Uh, show, showcasing the, the best players in the, in the game. Something important is that we wanted the game to be accessible to all study levels. This is why um, we made some important choices of simplification. For instance, you cannot uh, choose very finely your feeding rations for animals. You have the choice between the I think 10 different rations for cows and a little less for heifers, uh, but you cannot exactly choose what you want to feed your cows. 
Same for crop rotation, you have the choice between several crop rotations, but you cannot build your own crop rotation. And this is uh, so that every, every player can play, even if you don't know anything about crop rotation or you don't know anything about feeding ratio, you can still play this game. Uh, it's, uh, we, want to, we want the game to be accessible to international users, so the game is freely available online and it's translated in, well, it's available in six languages, so the five languages of the project, uh, which are Polish, Italian, uh, Flemish, French, and English, the international language of the project, and we also translated the game in Spanish, despite no Spanish is participating to the project, but uh, it's a useful language. And we also offer tutorials and pedagogical documents that we are in the process of translating in, in the same six languages. So four different farms offering, uh, offering the possibility of uh, discovering uh, the different particularities of, uh, of farms in Europe, uh, but also uh, an important possibility to create your own farm and parameterize your farm as the way you want. Uh, so it's a versatile uh, teaching tool where you can create your own scenarios, define the goals to reach, uh, and uh, we offer a teacher interface to follow multiple players in live, and this helps, for instance, uh, discussing the results of, uh, of, uh, of a classroom. The, the code is in JavaScript, so uh, quite uh, well-known uh, coding language and uh, under open license, so it's possible uh, if uh, someone wants to make a new version of Sega, it's possible to, to reuse part of the code. And uh, we hope that uh, the game will soon uh, uh, make uh, create a community of users and we will have some feedbacks to, to be able to improve the game. So now it's time for a live demonstration. So I will try to share my screen. If you have questions, uh, please uh, ask your questions in the, in the chat as soon as they, as they arrive and uh, the, the SEGE partners will probably be able to, to answer you before I see it. Okay, I think you should see my screen now. Uh, maybe I should restart. So this is uh, where you land when you click on the on the link uh, to Sege Game. So this is the the welcome page of Sege. Uh, you can choose uh, one of the six languages here. Uh, so I will choose English, and then you have two different um, modes you can play without connecting to your account so uh, anonymous playing or you can connect to your account uh, which will allow you to uh, be uh, identified so you if you do the best score uh, you will have your name in the in the table if you identify and this will also save your profile uh, with your best scores and uh, the, the badges you, you already gained uh, in the previous plays. And uh, this will also allow you the access of, to, to custom scenarios. But for the moment, let's, let's do a, a, an anonymous play. So we developed a specific one for today. Sorry, I didn't comment on that. Oops, I go back. So here you find the four different farms, French, Belgian, Italian and Polish. Uh, for the moment only the French far farm is fully verified. Uh, we still have some small issues uh, regarding crop rotations in the three other farms, but this will be solved probably uh, uh, early 2021. So for the moment I choose the French farm. And here maybe Does it work? Ça marche, Mathieu? 
Ah, sorry. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I took the wrong one. Um, I go back again. Here we go. So if I go on full screen, it should be better. So here is the farm that you that you have. Um, so you see that uh, you're oops, you're on the first year. Here you will find uh, the game objectives. So the standard game objective is to reach a good economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, and social sustainability uh, after ten years. And you will lose if your farm profit is negative for more than three years or if you didn't achieve uh, these goals after 10 years. Okay, this is the standard game, but you can, you can choose your own, well, you can personalize your, these game objectives. Here you will see that sometimes some, uh, some hazards can happen, uh, economic hazards, uh, like price variations or, uh, uh, agronomic hazards like uh, yield reduction or yield increase or pest outbreaks or things like that. This is also fully uh, customizable so you can invent your own uh, hazards. So this is the farm. You see that uh, if you go to crop management you have several choices of, uh, of crop management that you can choose from. And this is similar for uh, animal management, for instance. You have several sheets where you can choose different practices. In, bl in dark blue is the practice is, that is uh, already implemented on your farm, and in light blue are the options that are offered to your, uh, to your, to your player. Um, what can I comment? Um, so how to how to choose uh, a new practice? How to make your how to make your farm change? So let's say I want to uh, reduce uh, herbicide use. So I will choose, uh, for instance, a sound approach of chemical herbicides instead instead of systematic use. So I choose this one. You see yeah, with the little dots uh, where I, where I come from and which is the new practice that will be implemented. And in the same time, I will try to reduce uh, how much concentrate I give to my cows. Uh, let's say with uh, this kind of concentrate. So you see, I, I, I go from 1,000 kilos of milk, additional milk per cow per year produced by concentrate feed to only 500 kilos milk. And then if I want to validate these practices, uh, I have to click on next year and the results will, will happen next year. So I click on next year and here is the report that opens every year as soon as you finish your choices. So you see the practices that you have changed uh, this year. So we find again uh, herbicides and, uh, and concentrate management. And you see here um, which uh, impacts these changes have had on uh, several indicators. So on, on sustainability, we, you see that we go from 0 0.41 to 0 0.43, so small increase. And if you want more detail, you can see here by clicking on all the different things, uh, which indicators were improved in green uh, reduced in red or unchanged in black. Okay, so here the choices that we made have, have had some negative impacts on food production, of course, we give less feed to the animals. Uh, it's a little less simple to manage because the sound approach of herbicides and mechanical weed control is a bit more complex than a full herbicide. And, uh, but it, it improved the biodiversity, conservation, and uh, farm profit. Um, something that I didn't 
show you that here we limited the, the number of changes that you can do every year to five. This is also uh, customizable. You can change this number, but uh, five actions per year is uh, already quite a lot, uh, and it can make your ch your farm change very quickly. So it, it looked uh, relatively reasonable number of actions. Um, now what we see here is uh, the sustainability gauge. Uh, so you see that we decided to give the same weight to all the different pillars of sustainability, but uh, this can also be changed. And if you click on one of the, of the pillars, you will find the same indicators that you find in the report, uh, but in, a, in another representation. So here you find the six uh, sub-indicators constituting two uh, main dimension of social, social sustainability, so society's expectation and working condition of the farmer, and these aggregate into social sustainability. And you have the weight of each, uh, each indicator. It's not always a, a similar weight, so you see that workload is more important in our game than uh, how much simple the system is. So that's for sustainability, that's always accessible to the player and similarly the report, you can always come back to the report here in this little icon. I forgot to present the farm, so you have some char farm characteristics here, clicking on the little tractor, and you see that uh, you will find which crop you grow. Uh, we, we define two cropping systems, so uh, this allows to do two rotations on the farm, uh, which is uh, quite limiting, but still offers some diversity of, of possibilities. So here we have two cropping systems. One is maize wheat, and the other one is four years of grassland and two years of maize, which is quite uh, classical in the western part of France. But of course, this is different in the different countries. And here you find uh, the herd characteristics. So we, we see that we have a, an average number of 60 dericos, uh, 48 heifers, and uh, we produce 29 calves every, every year. Uh, and we produce uh, 400,000 a bit more milk of a uh, liter of milk. Um, so you see that all the actions are accessible through these little menus and there is a specific menu which is called the warehouse. It's represented by this little uh, milk truck here. And this, is no, this does not show um, uh, actions that you can do in your farm but more uh, some, some specific data. So you see economic data such as uh, gains, so subsidies, milk sales and live animal sales and costs, uh, so crop production costs, uh, livestock production, feed costs, treatments, and so on. You will find the subsidies that you earn on the farm. A very important sheet is the feed balance, so to see that, to see if your uh, feeding, uh, well, production, crop production system is uh, well balanced with the demand of your, uh, of your animals. And you will find other information about how much crop you produce, how much feed you purchase, uh, how much uh, animal production, so milk, meat production, animals sold or purchased. And the final uh, sheet is about workload, uh, where you can see here uh, in dark blue um, uh, work related to the animals and in light blue work related to the crops. If you remain in the green zone, uh, it's perfect. You're uh, under the, your maximum quantity of work, uh, so it's good for your uh, uh, working condition. If you go in the yellow zone, uh, you're in peak work. So here we see that we have a long, long period of time in peak work. And if you go above a certain quantity of, of peak work, you, are, uh, you have to hire a salary to help you on the farm. You cannot uh, deal with more work. 
So now let's see uh, maybe some uh, other changes, uh, ac actions. Uh, so let's say I want to uh, increase my uh, increase my my grasslands and uh, modify my feeding rations. So I will go to land use management and maybe instead of maize and wheat, I will choose uh, let's say uh, this this system grassland four years maize maize. I will produce a lot of forage because my other cropping system is already in this kind of uh, grassland and maize uh, system. And then I will adapt my uh, feeding rations for cows uh, by increasing uh, the number of months of grazing and, uh, and that will be it and see what happens. Okay, so it increased the sustainability of the farm and we can go back to the warehouse and see if we are so you see that we produce enough grass to feed all the animals uh, but we have to purchase uh, wheat, rapeseed and faba bean and straw and soybean to feed the animals for concentrate feed and we produce too much maize so maybe we should uh, Modify again the crop rotation to reduce maize and try to produce part of the concentrate feed of the cows. Um, here you see I changed, I clicked on next year and I changed nothing and you see that my sustainability is dropping very strongly with economic sustainability very degraded. I have no income anymore. And this is because uh, there was a hazard, and uh, this hazard was a uh, reduced milk production, reduced milk price. So you see that uh, this kind of hazard can, uh, yeah, make it a little more uh, unpredictable and also uh, make more fun in the game. Um, now I didn't show you this part. You see that this is uh, the, the personal uh, page of the player. Here I am uh, anonymous, so I, I don't have any badge yet. You see that you can win some different, different badges. Uh, you have uh, the evolution of your score and uh, the best score you, you already did. Okay, uh, so let's say I want to to earn a, a badge, um, maybe a biodiversity badge. So I will try to improve uh, the biodiversity of my of my farm to to increase uh, to to win this badge. So I will reduce part of the pesticide use, switch to biocontrol for uh, crop protection against diseases and similarly biocontrol for uh, crop protection against animal pests so this would this should probably increase uh, biodiversity and maybe I can also plant some hedgerows and also reduce uh, soil tillage okay so this should probably uh, help biodiversity on the farm. You see that the sustainability increased sharply. Uh, well, first because we are not anymore in a milk crisis and uh, because uh, we improved a lot environmental sustainability. And you see that biodiversity is, uh, is, is much better. So I probably, here you see this little uh, exclamation point and you see that uh, the changes that I made uh, are enough to, to win the biodiversity second prize. So if I continue my efforts, probably, uh, probably I can access uh, the badge biodiversity first prize. And these badges, uh, you collect them uh, every game and they, if, if you are logged in with your account, uh, you, you keep your badges every uh, game after game. So you can collect all the badges uh, and trying to reach all the different objectives of food production, reduce input, uh, environmental quality, farm diversification. It's really hard to get all the badges in one game. I don't think it's even possible. 
uh, but uh, uh, you can try to collect all the badges. Well, of course, it's not possible because you also have to play on the Belgian farm, the Italian farm, the French farm, and the Polish farm. Now let's see my sustainability. It should be not so bad. You see that I'm still not at 0 0.6 uh, here. Here it's okay, and social sustainability is also above 0 0.6, so I still need something to improve economic sustainability. So let's say I will shift my, uh, uh, my strategy uh, between farmer income and investment, and I will, uh, I will favor income-oriented strategies, so this should increase uh, my revenue. And this has a very positive effect on my economic sustainability because now my uh, farmer income is, is one, so it's perfect. Oh, I didn't say that all the different indicators are normalized between zero and one. Zero is very bad and one is very good uh, for all indicators. So now I am uh, perfect. I have 0 0.6 or above 0 0.6 on all pillars of sustainability, so if I continue until the 10th year, I should win. And here is what happens when you finish the game. Either you reach all the different objectives and you win the game, and your score is, is uh, saved on your profile, or you lose, and uh, you can restart the game and try another uh, strategy. Um, so I think that's it for the demonstration. I will stop to share the screen. Uh, so I hope that you this raised questions for you, and uh, now I will uh, let Mathieu present uh, the scenario creator that we imagined. Uh, a uh, accompanying uh, the game to help you uh, develop uh, several scenarios. So Mathieu, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you Olivier and uh, good afternoon uh, everybody. I will just put my presentation. Right, uh, so uh, in this uh, short presentation we'd like to present uh, a nice feature of SEGE the possibility for special users that we call teachers to create uh, customized uh, scenarios. So what information is customizable uh, within SEGE? A teacher can create a new scenario in which he will define information about the farm and for example he can choose the initial practices implemented on the farm when the game starts he can, uh, can modify several parameters such as uh, agricultural area, number of workers and so on. And also he can define the goals, the objectives to be reached by players to win a game. And also in a custom scenario the teacher can change uh, parameters such as prices, attainable yields and so on. And uh, a very important feature, you can create random events to introduce hazard, uh, which uh, will increase realism, complexity, and also fun uh, around uh, SEGE. In fact, uh, the teacher will use uh, this uh, web application to create new scenario from the uh, existing ones that uh, Olivier presented uh, in a previous uh, slide. For example, he can start from uh, the French farm scenario and he can then uh, modify many, many, many aspects of the scenarios. He can modify initial practices and default parameters. He can modify and create new layers, new goals, and also more uh, specific uh, uh, characteristic of the scenarios that I will not present uh, this afternoon. So for example, uh, for the, 
the initial practices in the web application all the initial practices are listed and one can change for example the team age man management and the teacher can decide that the, in this scenario the farm will start with a reduced tillage or no tillage instead of conventional tillage. Also it is possible to modify uh, important uh, parameters such as uh, crop yields, uh, price, uh, subsidies and uh, other parameters that can be important to uh, to customize in uh, in different uh, in different countries in different parts of uh, area of within uh, countries. A teacher can also modify uh, random events, and for a um, new alia, the teacher will define the name of uh, the event. For example, here. We, you've got an example of a random event already implemented in the game, the one related to crisis in the dairy industry. The teacher will also define the description of uh, this random event. It is possible to define the years in which this event may occur, for example, we decided that the crisis uh, in the dairy industry can happen from year two to the end of the game. You can define the probability of appearance of the random event. Here, for example, it's uh, uh, one time every four years in probability. And uh, uh, finally, uh, the teacher will have to define the parameters affected by uh, this uh, probability and for example here the parameter with this uh, horrible name is the one related to the milk price that will be reduced by 100 when the random event appears. Uh, it's also possible to create uh, goals exactly in the same way as uh, the random events to define how it is possible for the for the player to win or to lose the game. Another nice feature uh, of uh, SIGE is related to the ability for teachers to create meetings or virtual rooms and invite the student to join with a unique code. In these rooms all players uh, will play the same game with the same parameters, the same uh, uh, scenarios in a, in a limited time or not. So uh, the player will have to uh, connect to the game with an email and a specific password and then they will see this kind of uh, application and they will have to enter a multiplayer game code given by the teacher. In fact, uh, after that, uh, everything is like uh, the presentation made by uh, Olivier. There is uh, a unique uh, modification. You can see that there is a, a chrono chronometer here that will uh, inform the player the time remaining before the end of the game. In this web application, the teacher can create as many meetings as he wants and also he will have information about uh, players connected to the game, to the virtual room, and uh, the teacher will see many information about the way players uh, use the game. For example, here it's a, it's a screenshot with only one player uh, that is uh, playing the first year of the, of the game, and you can see here the different uh, values for the sustainability indicators. And also the teacher will have information about the different winners here with a horrible pseudo, but uh, it's possible to see the name of the different players if you want. Uh, the teacher will see the name of the different um, players connected to the virtual room the score, the number of years uh, the game uh, lasts, 
and also the different indicators value at the end of the game. So it's uh, all for this uh, part of the of the scenario creation. Here you see actually on this slide you see uh, that uh, is the real result of SEGE contest that we organized with these uh, 240 students playing. 52 students succeeded in finishing the game and the best score was uh, 72 uh, 1,347, which is a very high score that I have never, re never reached myself. <laughs> so the students are, uh, can be really good uh, after a few games. Uh, they can really uh, invest in the game and, and become really, uh, really good players. Um, I have to recharge my uh, presentation. Okay, so last part before the open discussion, uh, the pedagogical materials that we developed. Um, so first of all, uh, we developed a few tutorials, video tutorials to get started to help players uh, quickly understand how the, games, uh, the game works. So here you find uh, five uh, short scenarios, uh, five short tutorials uh, in English. Uh, we also have some in French and some in Polish and we are trying, uh, well we are currently in the working on the uh, subtitling all the videos and uh, so you see that you have the presentation of the project, introduction to the game, game interface, practices and a, a simple example of scenario and this is all available online on this uh, YouTube channel. Um, I will give you the link in a few slides. And we also developed, uh, well, it's a pedagogical game. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a fun game, really, but it's a pedagogical game. Uh, so for teachers, we developed an online pedagogical space. It's on a, a, a Moodle platform. Uh, and here, uh, you can access uh, different resources according to your language. Uh, of course, there are more resources in English uh, right now, but um, we we are uh, really open to uh, uh, improving and keeping this uh, this uh, space up to date. So, if some teachers uh, create some new content in Spanish or in uh, in Flemish, uh, we will upload these documents uh, on the on this uh, online pedagogical space. So, right now, you find. Um, a, a tutorial, well, uh, the, the teacher guide, there is a teacher guide available in all languages. Uh, there, are, there are some exercise, uh, examples of uh, ready-to-use exercises, one about livestock and one about crops uh, that are also available. And uh, you find also the training materials that we used for us, the several activities that we had during the project. So you find, for instance, all the slides that we presented during the Bologna Winter Week, or you can find also the slides that we used uh, for uh, the teacher training that we organized in uh, November and December. So all these documents are uh, free to uh, download and can be used for teachers to, to develop uh, new materials based on these uh, contents. And finally, uh, this game is a game to learn, it's a serious game, so I show you the results uh, that we published in Sustainability uh, uh, Journal uh, earlier this year. Uh, you can find by typing Jouan uh, 2020 and the Sustainability and you will probably find the paper, otherwise I also I think I put the link uh, on, on another slide. And you see that um, in the Bologna training uh, in last February, uh, we organized a, a test of uh, agroecological knowledge before, well, at, at the beginning of the training week and in the end of the training week. And we compared the scores of, uh, of the two, two tests. And what we see is that uh, uh, we are not on the 1-1 one, one line here, we are more uh, 
the post-test scores were, uh, were significantly higher than the pre-test scores. 69% uh, in fact of students increased their scores, which is not all of them. We see that some, some students uh, answered uh, not as good at the final score, at the final test than at the first test. Uh, but this is a significant increase. Uh, we didn't see any difference between three big groups of students, the veter veterinary stu students, which are very, who are very specialized in animal science, of course, uh, the crop science students, and the more multidisciplinary students. Our hypothesis was that the multidisciplinary student would, l would learn less uh, but it's not uh, so easy to see uh, with our sample. Um, what we see is that the higher uh, the students with the lower first score uh, increased more than the other students, which is quite logical. Students who already know knew a lot before playing didn't learn a lot of things. And 86% of students appreciated the game. And what they particularly liked is uh, that, well, of course, they learned some new knowledge. Uh, they also liked very much to have the immediate feedback of uh, what, uh, what are the consequences of their actions on the farm. And also, um, they really liked uh, the, uh, the challenge offered by the game and uh, sort of uh, comparing their score with, uh, with other players and uh, also Playing together was also something that they wanted to highlight. Even though the game is really, it's a solo game. It's the, there is no uh, no uh, multiplayer mode, uh, but still they were they were really happy to play. Maybe several students behind one computer and try to define the best strategy and compete with other groups of students. So they were really uh, enjoying this uh, game dimension. So this is uh, my last slide, I think. So I, I put here uh, several useful links. So again, to summarize, uh, well, of course, there is the official website, SEGE website, for, for describing SEGE project. Uh, for the moment, the game, um, I, uh, I join you this short link, rebrand.ly slash SEGE. Um, this link is will always be uh, working. Um, right now we are in the process of uh, moving our game from a, a temporary website to the final website which will be sege.org uh, but right now uh, it's not yet uh, implemented so use this uh, uh, short link which will always be working. Here you have the YouTube channel of the game, uh, pedagogical material so open uh, pedagogical uh, space. Uh, I don't know if you saw the trailer uh, in the invitation. Uh, for some of you the link was uh, not working because I broke it accidentally. Um, so you can access to the video trailer of the game here and we, I also give you the link of uh, the first scientific article that we published uh, this year. So three o'clock. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and now, uh, well, I think we have uh, a bit more than 20 minutes to to discuss and answer your questions and uh, maybe if other partners or the project partners want to say a few words or to add some comments, please uh, feel free. I'm listening to you or reading to you. Yes, I can put the links in the in the chat if you prefer.
I think uh, my colleagues already answered some of your questions uh, during the during the presentation. But please, if you have some other comments, feel free. So this is the game. Okay, here you have all the links. Oh, Tony Dalgard. Ah, thank you very much, Tony. Well, the idea is uh, that um, um, you can, of course, communicate on the game and uh, make it well known. We we don't uh, earn money from it. It's really uh, just to uh, to make uh, the maximum uh, use of this. Uh, of this European project. So if you think that this can this can be useful or inspiring to any of your uh, uh, colleagues or our friends, uh, please uh, feel free to to transfer the information and also feel free to use it yourself, to give it a test. All these links are, uh, yeah, um, you can use them right now, they are all working. So you can save them on your computer, and um, uh, I will. Uh, yeah, we can send you the presentation. I think it's a, it's a good idea, and also we recorded the the webinar. So we will put uh, uh, we will put the video on YouTube if I manage to figure out how it works. But uh, I think it's possible. Um, so if we can put the video of the seminar on YouTube, we will do it, and uh, so you will have uh, permanent access to what we said and, and the links. Ah, any plans of making a simpler version for smaller farms? Mm, not really, in fact, but um, maybe you could develop uh, because we, you can change the number of animals or the or the area of crops. Uh, so would it answer part of your uh, questions, uh, Juan, or not? I'm trying to keep. Uh, <laughs> Olivier, can you say yes. a word about the the public, the target, uh, which, which kind of students? Because there is uh, two questions uh, about these points. Uh, what we imagined uh, is that uh, the game is really um, uh, suited for um, university students uh, in the fields of uh, biological science, agronomic science, uh, animal science, crop science, uh, that kind of fields. Uh, but it's also, um, we, we tested it uh, uh, during the SEGE contest, we used it uh, with uh, also uh, uh, students from high schools, agricultural high schools, and they were performing very well. So um, I think that also younger people with uh, some, some prior knowledge on, on farming systems can, can really easily use the game. If you don't know anything about farming, of course it's uh, well, it's much more difficult because uh, you don't even understand uh, the practices. So it's uh, it it would be harder with uh, general students from high schools, I would say. But uh, agricultural high school and definitely higher education students in uh, in uh, life sciences. Well, thank you very much, Laura, for your congratulations. It's always uh, very nice to read that. I'm trying to see if there are other comments to answer. 
Uh, the uh, maybe I don't know if Mathieu answered for Nathalie the teacher app, the teacher part of the app. Uh, for the moment, is really uh, private. Uh, we have access to it as uh, developers of the game. Uh, what we asked our so may, maybe I didn't present that, but um, we work with a software company who is in charge of the well, informatic development of the game, and uh, they are working uh, right now on uh, defining different profiles. So there will be a. Uh, a general, uh, well, a student profile. If you connect, uh, if you create an account, a basic account, you will have, you will be registered as a student, and you will have basic rights. So just playing the game, and uh, having a profile to keep your badges and scores and so on. And we will also have a second kind of profile, which will be a teacher profile. Uh, and uh, with these rights, you will be able to access the. A custom uh, scenario creator, uh, but for the moment uh, it's not yet implemented. So you will have still to be patient a few uh, few more weeks until it works. And as soon as this will work, uh, you just have to send us a mail saying I am a teacher, and uh, we will create you a teacher account. Uh, well, we are really sorry that this feature doesn't work right now, but uh, this is the end of the project right now, end of December, <laughs> so we wanted to communicate on it uh, before the end of the project, the official end of the project, but uh, we are still uh, under development of a few features that are uh, really important. Could this game be used in the North African farms? Well, actually, I don't really know. Uh, of course, you could play the game saying that uh, you play the game as if you were a European farmer. Um, it's not so easy to adapt to, to very different contexts uh, like Africa or even South America. I don't think it's, it, it's... the farm will be very different, the crops will be very different and uh, even uh, some uh, game parameters that are inside the model. For instance, uh, uh, how much uh, hectares per, uh, per hour you can work with your tractor, or how many hectares you can spray uh, with a herbicide. All these references are working for European context, but probably not very adapted to very different contexts. So I would be very careful if uh, you want to make it look like a North African farm. I don't really know um, North African farms, I have to admit, so maybe it can work for some of them. But be careful that probably some of the uh, parameters that are in, included in the model and that you cannot change uh, will be not very adapted. No, we cannot modify the climate and soil profile, really. Yeah, you can modify the organic matter content, uh, but not pH. pH is not uh, even uh, included in the game. Yeah, thank you, Genola, for this uh, con constructive answer. Um, it's important to also to keep in mind that if you don't want to if you don't want to play the French farm, you can build another farm and say it's a virtual farm in a virtual country. And the idea is that students will still learn about uh, multidisciplinary approaches and uh, and uh, and systems approach even if it doesn't look like exactly the farm that they know from them from their country. Um, so the game can probably be used in many different contexts. The idea is that it cannot represent uh, all the farms in all the farm diversity uh, in the world.
trying to catch up with all the chats. Yeah, I see the comment from Michel. Uh, I kind of agree. I, I think that small family farms are probably quite different and they, the game is probably not very well adapted to represent very small farms with a, a lot of production used inside the family. Um, yeah, for the last uh, comment, is there a chance that you can help us developing a similar idea for Brazilian or South American students? Um, we have been contacted by uh, a few uh, partners from outside Europe. Um, it could be possible. Um, it, it's a lot of work, so it would probably require a pedagogical project finance and, and so on. And, and planning, but uh, it's, it's probably feasible to adapt the game to some other contexts, or maybe it's also more interesting for you to uh, get inspired from the game or study uh, the model and, and build yourself your own game based on it. It could also be a solution. Yeah, the group work is really, really, uh, I really uh, rejoin uh, Benjamin, that's, that's something really important. The group work we saw is, is really interesting in terms of pedagogy. So it's a solo game, but finally uh, discussing the options before playing can be very interesting. Yeah, I see some other people uh, writing. If you're interested, I can also show you the trailer as suggested by Benjamin. It'd be nice to see it. If you didn't see. Um, it's a short trailer, short video trailer. About two minutes. That's it for the trailer. Yeah, the trailer is quite nice, I think. If you want to motivate your students, <laughs> use it. Well, again, thank you very much to all of you uh, for your uh, contribution questions. Uh, if you have other comments, we are still online to answer them. If you want to leave, uh, feel free. And uh, uh, we really want to try to uh, create this kind of uh, gamers community around this game. Uh, about uh, European teachers uh, and uh, and people outside of Europe interested in teaching agroecology or, or or studying agroecology. So yeah, if you if you have suggestions, if you have uh, uh, projects and so on, uh, feel free to 
contact us and uh, we will see what we can uh, do together. It's really also a, a nice opportunity to collaborate uh, around agroecology. We'll try to organize a, maybe a forum on the website as well to to keep you informed of changes or to to help to give you a space to exchange. Okay, well, thank you very much to all of you for your uh, attention and we hope that this uh, game will be useful to you. Thanks again.